I got tired of weapons in Minecraft feeling the same, so I'm making a mod to completely overhaul Minecraft's damage system. Today I'm going to add elemental damage and resistance to the game. When starting a project, I like to begin by planning things out in a physical notebook. I find that by keeping things separated from the computer, it helps me to focus solely on the design side of the project. I didn't really know where to start, so I decided picking which elements I wanted to include in the system would be as good a place as any. Air, water, earth, and fire are the first thing that come to mind, probably because of a certain show. But I wanted my elemental system to be a bit more grounded in realism, at least for elements that exist in real life. For example, I've always found the concept of water damage in games very strange. Water, even if it's conjured from a spell or forming a sword, is still a physical substance that has no inherent magical properties. In my mind at least, that means it should just do physical damage. Because of this, I decided to take some inspiration from one of my favorite games. In Warframe, elements are classified by how they inflict damage, rather than what inflicted the damage. So instead of fire, you get heat, because fire does damage by heating things up. I really like this idea, because it makes it much easier to conceptualize which attack should be doing what kind of damage. Piggybacking off of Warframe, I decided to keep heat and cold because they fit into Minecraft's fantasy-ish theme relatively fine, but I went with lightning over electric because I feel it fits better and still gets the point across just fine. For more fantastical elements, I decided to lean into features and lore that already exist within the game. So instead of dark, light, and magic elements, I went with wither, aether, and ender. I think that'll help to make things feel more like Minecraft. To summarize, we have three kind of physical, realistic elements. Heat, cold, and lightning. Then we have three more fantastical elements. Ender, Wither, and Aether. I think I'll leave it at that for now, but I could always come back later and add more. The last step before I start coding is to figure out exactly how elements should function. And for that, it'll be easier just to think about weapons for now. The first idea I thought of would be to treat vanilla attack damage as non-elemental and add additional elemental damage types to weapons that should have them. This would definitely be the simplest way to go, and a lot of the times simple is better. But I didn't really like how this made elemental damage more of a separate system from vanilla damage handling, and I want a system that incorporates what already exists in vanilla as part of a greater whole. I decided to treat vanilla attack damage as a total damage value and have elements act as a split, determining what percentage of the damage should be converted into each element. This approach integrates elements more seamlessly into the existing system and helps players quickly assess an item's overall strength. Alright, I've been talking a lot of theory, now let's get to work on something a little more practical. The first thing to do is add our elements to the game. I'll add the ones we just talked about, and I'll also add this one called Basic here, which represents non-elemental damage. Not too complicated, but they don't actually do anything yet. Remember, the plan is to have vanilla attack damage convert into portions of elemental damage, so I'll do that using item NVT tags. Say we have a netherite sword. By default, a netherite sword does 8 damage. We attach some data to the netherite sword, which we can then read later in damage calculation. Pretty simple. Adding an NBT tag to an item isn't particularly hard, but we need the game to know what data should go in the NBT tag. Unfortunately, the only way to do that is manually, so what we're going to do is use JSON files. I added this command which scans through all the items in a specific mod, or the entire game, that have main hand or offhand attribute modifiers. Then, the list is saved to the config folder. Here, the user can edit the elemental spread of any item. In the future, I'd like to look into adding a system for automatic generation rules depending on item material or some other factors, but for now, this'll do. Once we're done configuring the weapons in the game, we'll take the list and put it into a data pack. This is important because it means the stats of these items are world specific, which ensures that no client server mismatch shenanigans will occur. Then I'll write some code that reads the data pack and adds a tag to the item. Now that the weapon has its elemental damage stored in a tag, we need to make sure that the information is actually being used. When you attack something in Minecraft, all the information about the attack is stored in a little bundle of data called a damage source. 
The damage source is then sent over to the target of the attack so they can decide how to handle it in damage calculation. The main two pieces of data that damage sources store are damage type, or what caused the damage, and damage amount. What we're going to do is attach another piece of data to the damage source to track the elemental split of an attack. There is a problem though. What if the attack comes from the environment? Luckily, Minecraft has an easy, built-in way to handle this called tag keys. Tag keys are little labels that can be attached to things in game with data packs. They provide an easy way to check if said thing has a certain property. So for each element, we can create a tag key that labels a damage type as that element. Then we just have to come over here to the mod's inbuilt data pack and tag all the vanilla damage types with whatever element we want the damage type to be converted to. Of course, these are overridable with data packs, so if your mod pack for some reason has cold lava or fiery cactuses, you could easily make those changes to suit your needs. This is also useful to convert damage types from other mods. For example, fire spells from iron spellbooks can easily be made to do heat damage, like so. The last step is to modify damage calculations so that elemental damage is actually considered. I'm not going to talk about how it works in vanilla, because if I explained all that, this video would probably double in length. Instead, I'll just go over how the new system will work. First, we'll take the attack damage and reduce it by the defender's armor points. Let's quickly go through the math for that. To convert armor points to a percentage damage reduction, we're going to use a variation of this formula here called the sigmoid function. Here's what it looks like on a graph. I'm going to multiply it by 100 so that our range of values is between 0 and 100. Because remember, we're trying to get a percentage of damage reduced, so anything over 100 doesn't really make sense. 50% damage reduction at 0 armor doesn't look quite right. Let's add 2 to the negative x term to shift the line to the right. Okay, nice, but the difference between 11% reduction and 99% reduction is only 7 armor points. We can squish the curve a bit by dividing the negative x by a number greater than 1. Mm, that looks better, but 88% reduction at 20 points is still too small of a scale for modern Minecraft. Let's try 10. 50% reduction at 20 points is more in the ballpark of what I want, so I'm going to keep that for now. We still have this problem of 0 armor points having 11% reduction though. I'll just do a quick fix for that. No need to overthink things. Finally, I'll add the reverse of the function just in case I had some effect in the future that can reduce armor by a flat amount. But why did we just do all that? Well, you may notice that this function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 100. This is an important feature, as it caps the amount of damage reduction a player can get naturally by virtue of diminishing returns. This allows for the greater range of armor values that you commonly see in modded Minecraft but to be useful and relevant without being completely unbalanced. It may seem worrying that 20 armor points only gives 50% damage reduction, but remember that we still need to add elemental damage reduction later, so it makes sense for armor to be weaker than vanilla. Back to the diagram, we'll just reduce the damage by whatever percentage reduction number we get out of the function. Next up is enchantments and effects. And for this, I think it's fine to just leave it how it's handled in vanilla. From what I'm reading here, nothing seems conflicting with any of the new stuff we're adding, so I'll just go ahead and copy the code from the base game. Remember, the less we have to change, the better, because it'll make the mod feel more like vanilla and easier to pick up for more people. Finally, we get to the new stuff, the elements. These boxes, base damage and affinity, are element-specific attributes attached to each player in mod. Base damage is pretty self-explanatory. It's there in case I want to add equipment that does a static amount of elemental damage instead of the split, and also so that mobs can do elemental damage. Affinity is just a multiplier. Let's run through a quick example where a player with 2 wither base damage and 150% wither affinity is using a sword with 15 attack damage that does 25% wither damage. After we split the damage into its respective elements, we'll add the player's base damage for that element, and then multiply the sum by the player's affinity for that element. This will be the final elemental damage before being reduced by the defender's elemental resistance. For resistance, I'm just going to use a simple system of 0 to 10, where each point is worth 10% resistance to that element. The reason we can get away with such a simple system here is because we get to put the elemental resistance values on the items ourselves. 
we don't have to work around an already existing system like armor. Now we can add back up the elemental damage numbers and hit the target for that much damage. Let's get in game and test everything out. So before I got into testing, I did add a couple more things, that being uh, tooltips and damage indicators so that things would be easier to visualize. Um, but yeah, let's give myself a diamond sword here. And we can see I should have given this no elemental damage. We can check the tooltip. So yeah, we can see it's doing 100% basic. And maybe next I'll do a netherite sword so we can see the uh, heat damage that we've been talking about. And oh, okay. Yeah, so the netherite sword does is doing 50% heat, just like we said, which is great. And I also did add an iron sword, or I used the um, adjacent system to add a bunch of elements to the iron sword just to test and see what it would look like. So let's see what that looks like. All right, nice. Let's try hitting something, I guess. Uh, maybe I'll just spawn some zombies. And so you can see the damage indicators, which should change color depending. Yeah, should change color depending on the elements. I kind of tried to make them look a bit like Borderlands almost so hopefully that looks good obviously there's still a lot more to do players still need to have elemental resistances on armor and uh, mobs need to get resistances and elemental damage um, but yeah if you're interested in future updates make sure to stay tuned